um, we are going to continue on with chapter 9 material. We really have two main topics left, um, electrolytes and osmosis. So we will talk about electrolytes first. Um, this is the slide you want to start with for electrolytes in the chapter 9 uh, lecture titled Solutions. Find this slide. And so when we talk about electrolytes, um, you guys have probably heard this phrase, I don't know, when you talk about your blood or um, just different things we need in our diet and in our body. Um, essentially what they are is they are ions that are dissolved in solution, okay? Um, electrolytes are ions. And when we introduced ions, I actually brought up the term electrolytes. I don't know if you remember me talking about... Um, Oh, it's not LeBron. It was Kobe Bryant's line of um, like drink. He has like a drink called Body Armor, um, and it goes on and on. These types of sports drinks go on and on. Gatorade about the amount of electrolytes they have and how they hydrate you and things. But um, the reason we call them electrolytes is because if you read the next part, the solution can conduct electricity. There are positive and negative charges due to the fact that electrolytes are ions in solution. All right. Um, when you have an ionic compound, ionic compounds are really the only kind of compounds that are going to dissolve into ions, right, in a solution. So we no longer talk about them as compounds. We only talk about them as ions when they're dissolved in solution, um, especially for blood. So these figures here are showing you just when you put sodium chloride in the solution and potassium bromide in a solution, we don't talk about sodium chloride and potassium bromide anymore. We talk about the fact that we have sodium ions, chloride ions, potassium ions, and bromide ions. Um, and then similar thing over here, if we have these two ionic compounds when they're in solution, um, we just talk about them as ions and you'll see all the ions are the same. Um, even though we, we started out with two different compounds in these, uh, or ionic compounds in these pictures. Uh, now there is a difference for some compounds as to what kind of electrolyte they will B or what, what kind of electrolyte they're considered. We have really strong electrolytes, we have weak electrolytes, and we have molecules that we cannot consider to be electrolytes. And this figure, I even put what page of the text it's from in your book, so it's uh, one I think you should really look at. A strong electrolyte, if you'll read this phrase, it's completely ionized. In solution, it will totally dissolve into its ions. You will have, so for sodium chloride, when it's done dissolving, you will have no sodium chloride um, molecules or, or ionic compound left. It'll all be all sodium ions and all chloride ions. A weak electrolyte will only partly ionize. Okay, so if you'll notice, we drew in a double arrow right here. You'll get the Ford reaction. Um, so this looks like acetic acid uh, is what that looks like. And it will partially ionize into acetate and an H plus ion. However, it won't totally dissolve into those things. So you'll still have some acetic acid floating around in solution once you reach equilibrium. Notice for the top equation, we only have one arrow pointing to the products, not a reversible arrow. And then we also have things that we consider to be a non-electrolyte. Okay, these are molecules that are, or these are compounds, they're, they're not ionic compounds. They're molecules um, that are oftentimes covalently bonded molecules. Glucose is maybe the best example we have. Glucose does not, it does not break into ions, okay? We don't get ions from glucose. So because we don't get ions, we just say that we have um, a big chunk of solid glucose, and then we can have glucose broken into individual glucose molecules, and that's what we would consider to be aqueous glucose. So these would be individual Uh, glucose molecules. Okay, and over here you may have a, a large amount of glucose molecule molecules interacting together. So like a large um, sugar crystal. 
I hate to use the word crystal because I don't want you to make it. I don't want to make it sound like it's an ionic compound, but maybe you have one you know huge chunk of sugar, and then when you put it in water, it dissolves into individual glucose molecules. That's all we're trying to say here. But glucose itself, an individual glucose molecule, does not break into ions the way ionic compounds do, um, or molecules like acetic acid, uh, which has is made up of ions. So um, moving on. Talk, that's, that's what electrolytes are, and I definitely want you to be able to determine if something would be an electrolyte or not. You don't necessarily have to differentiate between a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte. Um, now, if I gave you an equation with a reversible arrow, and I said, can we consider this molecule to be a stronger or weaker electrolyte? Then you should be able to determine um, if it has a reversible arrow, we would consider that uh, to be a weak electrolyte because that's what you see right here. But if you have a um, equation like this where you just have one arrow in one direction, you would call that a strong electrolyte. So you actually can differentiate between strong and weak, um, but for sure you need to be able to differentiate between things that are electrolytes and things that we cannot consider to be electrolytes because they don't dissolve into ions. And that's just knowing the difference between ionic compounds and um, non-ionic compounds, covalently bonded compounds, like glucose. Okay, moving on. Um, we are now going to talk about equivalents. So, oops, I did not mean to zoom on. Now we're going to talk about equivalents, um, because this also has to do with ions and electrolytes. Um, equivalents are a term of, it's just, it's just kind of a, a unit we would use for solutions. Um, but it's not measuring an amount of solute. The kicker here and the hang up, the difficulty for understanding equivalence with some people is that we are talking about an amount of charge, okay? Because ions carry charges. We've known that since chapter two, early in the semester. Ions carry positive charges and negative charges. They can be a plus one or a plus two or a plus three. They could be a minus one or a minus two. Um, and so we have a term just for measuring an amount of charge in a solution, okay? So just the way you would say mole per liter, we can actually use this word equivalent per liter, okay? It's a unit of concentration, but it's not measuring the concentration of a solute, it's measuring the concentration of charge, okay? So if you read this next bullet point, an equivalent is the number of ions that carry one mole of charge, okay? So I know that sounds confusing. We're going to walk through some examples and, and unpack this a little more, but let me read that again. An equivalent is the number of ions that carry one mole of charge, okay? So for example, just real quick, if I have one mole of Na+, plus, and in fact, I'm going to erase this line. It's getting in my way. If I have one mole of sodium cations, I have one mole of plus one charge. Does that make sense? Okay, if I have, so that, that would be one equivalent. All right, so we'll, we'll walk through several examples like this, but before we really get into that, what I wanna talk about is um, why equivalents are important. Really mainly for blood, uh, understanding what an equivalent is is important. Uh, we have several biological solutions. The main one being blood. We also have intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid we could talk about, but we'll just focus on blood. Uh, it has many different ions, okay? So blood contains many different ions. And it's really important that um, those electrolytes or those ions in our blood stay maintained at normal levels, okay? If they deviate from normal levels very much, uh, it can be life-threatening. For example, um, one of the major diseases in the world, uh, cholera, uh, it results in heavy and continuous diarrhea, and this causes dehydration and results in extremely low sodium um, ion levels in our blood, okay? So 
Honestly, um, this is one of the leading causes for death of young kids and youth in rural societies. Um, they literally die from diarrhea and cholera. Um, one of the this is one of the main problems that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation honestly is working on um, to be corrected. Uh, things like cholera can be corrected with um, they can be corrected with hydration therapy. You know, which which would cause you to drink more fluids and um, increase levels of electrolytes in your in your blood, but um, it can be prevented completely, not just corrected, but prevented with proper sewage and sanitation systems. So um, it's one of the major problems in the world that huge foundations are working on. Um, all that to say, it's important um, that blood maintains normal uh, levels of electrolytes. All right, and we'll look at what normal levels are in a minute in the table on the next slide, but going back to um, just understanding what an equivalent is. Um, I actually wrote this just a minute ago, but here you see one equivalent of Na plus ions, sodium plus one ions is one mole of sodium, okay? If we have one mole of sodium cations, we have one equivalent, okay? That's because one mole of sodium cations carries one mole of plus one charge, like I wrote earlier, okay? Um, one, if we look at this 0.5 mole of calcium cations, because each calcium cation carries a plus two charge, if we only just have half a mole, then we still have one equivalent of charge, okay? So one equivalent of calcium cations only takes half a mole of calcium cations because each cation carries double the amount of charge, okay? If we had one mole, of Ca2+, plus, then we have two moles uh, of charge, positive charge. Okay, I'll put a little plus sign. Two moles of positive charge, and that equals two equivalents. I'm gonna abbreviate, two equivalents. And actually, I don't wanna confuse you. I don't want you to think that stands for equilibrium. I'm gonna use a lowercase. Q. Capital E lowercase Q stands for equivalent. Capital E capital Q is equilibrium. Okay, so let's erase that. We're not talking about equilibrium. All right, um, so hopefully you're beginning to understand this. We'll read the third statement here. One mole of sodium cations has the same amount of charge as half a mole of calcium plus two cations. Okay, and then Sometimes we talk about milli equivalents, especially when we're talking about the blood. The amount of equivalents is refer is, is uh, communicated in milli equivalents because some of these ions in our blood are there in really low concentrations. And um, same relationship for a milli equivalent to an equivalent, just as a milliliter to a liter or a millimeter to a meter. Um, when you put milli that prefix in front of any word. Uh, it decreases the size by a thousand. So there's a thousand milli equivalents in one equivalent, just the same way there.